You didn't need two lessons. And since two lessons can't be anything crazy, right? What I'm going to try to convince you today and next class is that what you're doing today and next class is what you did last unit. It just looks different. All we're going to do is transition from motion which is a helpful way to explain the fundamental theorem of calculus and the big thing you learned in unit seven. And we are going to transition back to the world of F, F prime and F double prime. Okay. Right. We, we, the entire first semester was F, F prime, F double prime. And all of a sudden we change gears. We're going to make our way back to F and F prime and F double prime. What was the key that we learned? Yeah, sure. Signs of derivatives. Already knew that. Already knew about how a sign of a derivative can tell me if we're decreasing or increasing with our original guy. What was new? Areas under derivatives tell us how much we're going down and how much we're going up. Areas under derivatives equal change in position. How can this be applied elsewhere? Well, it doesn't have to be X prime. It could be F prime. That could be F prime. That means F. That means the area under F prime gives me the change in F. Okay, this could be P prime. And that's the letter we're going to use a lot today, P. We're going to transition back to F. Next class, we'll get back to F. But today's class, we're going to talk about P. Well, if P prime is negative and positive, then P is going down and going up, and the area under P prime will be the change in the original, a change in a total, a change in a position. Any variable can be used. Doesn't have to be x prime x. Okay. Now let's go into our homework. Flip to um, second page. You'll notice, and if you keep flipping through, we got these word problems, these free response word problems. Let's Read a couple of them. Fish enter a lake at a rate modeled by the function E. Fish leave the lake at a rate modeled by the function L. E and L are measured in fish per hour. Oh, excuse me, per hour. Fun. Skip the bird. People enter a line for an escalator at a rate modeled by the function R. R is lowercase. R is measured in people per second. People exit the line at a constant rate of 0.7 people per second. Next question. The rate at which rainwater flows into a drain pipe is modeled by the function R. R of T is 20 sine T squared over 35. The pipe is partially blocked, allowing water to drain at the other end of the pipe at a rate modeled by D. Now, first things first, we have to kind of think about like, what is going on in these questions. Okay, and the easiest way we can think about it 
is with a water bottle. Anybody own a water bottle? Cool. Great. No, it's okay. We'll leave it open. Okay. When you fill up a water bottle, water flows in at a specific rate. Sometimes if you go to a fancy water bottle station, it's a consistent rate. The water steadily rises, right? Sometimes if you go to a janky water fountain and you have to press the button, you know, you're moving it around. Sometimes it's lower, sometimes it's less. So sometimes the rates change, which means like the levels are not going to change consistently. It'll go up, but maybe it's like slowing down, right? Does that make sense? Okay, cool. Water's going in. Let's pretend there's a hole in the water bottle. And water is also going out. The question is, what is happening to the water level in your water bottle? Okay? Every single question we just read is we're starting with some amount. We are adding things, but things are also going out. What's happening to the level in between? Does that make sense? Okay? Okay. We will use calculus to figure this out. Now, what you are given are rates in, a rate at which water is going in, a rate at which velocity is going out. Sometimes they are given in these capital letters, big R, big D, rate that rainwater flows into a pipe, rate that uh, pipe allows water out. They will tell you, they will give you units, rate in is in cubic feet per hour. Traffic flowing through an intersection and in cars per hour. Cool? Now let's go back a little bit. We said areas under derivative are changes in position or changes in total. What are our other words for derivatives besides slope of a tangent? Derivative, slope of a tangent. What's the third thing? No. Tell your neighbor. Derivatives are slopes of tangents, which give you what? What's the third thing that's synonymous? It's the same thing. A rate of change. A derivative is a rate of change. Guys, rate, capital R, capital D. This is a derivative. This is a derivative. These are derivatives. They are derivatives, okay? In your problem with the fish, with the water, with the escalator, people, you are given the rate at which stuff is going in and stuff is going in. You're given how quickly stuff is going in and how quickly stuff is going out. You're given derivatives, cool? Okay, cool. To help us understand what's going on, we're going to stick, stick to a specific problem, the drain pipe problem. Think of it as a very large water bottle with a hole in it. Okay? The rate at which rainwater flows into a drain pipe, how quickly it's flowing in is R of T cubic feet per hour. Pipe is partially blocked, allowing water to drain at a rate modeled by capital D, from zero to eight. Get to the right page, Beckworth. There are 30 cubic feet of water in the pipe at T equals zero. Oh, if you ask me to go to the bathroom once like I asked the class a question, I know you've checked out. Don't be that guy or girl, okay? This is a classic bathroom lesson. Can I just go to the bathroom? Like, no, no. You're in. You're staying in. Okay. How can we find the total amount of water that's in the pipe at a 
at, after eight hours. Well, like, here's where we're going to break out a new letter P. P is going to stand for like a population or like a position. You guys are comfortable with positions, but it's not really a position. It's like a total. Population. A total amount, okay? I want to use A, but we've used A before for like zeros and stuff. I wanted to use a capital T, but it gets confusing, so I'm switching things this year to P, okay? And what do we talk about with the, the water bottle scenario? Well, Malcolm started with some water in her water bottle. Then she added water. But unfortunately, the water bottle is, I don't know, what would be a good kid's word for a broken water bottle? Sure, leaky. I was thinking for like whack. Unfortunately, your water bottle is whack and uh, it's leaking out. Okay, so we got an issue, we got water in, we got water out. Okay, now. How can you get this information, initial, total, and total out, using the information provided? Tell your neighbors, go. Put a little bit of thought process into it. All right, here's the first thing people do when they see equations like R. First people think to do is to plug in 8. They're like, oh, I guess I got to plug in 8. Well, if you plug in 8, you get how quickly water is added. You're given a derivative. You're given a rate of change because R is a rate. R of H is not a total in. It is a velocity in. Hopefully you were thinking, I got the 30. And because Mr. Messner told me, and because I pay attention, that areas, oops, that areas under derivatives gives us totals. Hopefully I was paying attention to that. We'll write it down again, though. Hopefully I was thinking, since R is a derivative, I should use an integral to find the area under my derivative. Do you think of that, Benini? We're working our way back to F and F prime and F double prime, Benini. All right. In your notes, on the next page, you'll see keys to rate problems. Just leave that open on the side because we need to add some stuff for you guys to come back to. Reminder, because it's so important, it is the key to the second semester. Areas under derivatives, or let's be just more specific, areas under rates equal total displacement, changes in position. For all of our problems, to find a total, I'm going to use population. We have an initial amount, I'm just writing this again, plus a total that has come in minus the total that has gone out. To find our total in and total out, we will have to take areas under our rate 
in and are raped out. Okay. How much water is in our pipe after eight hours? Get a calculator. This is the most satisfying lesson in terms of getting an answer that's up on the board yourself. So you guys need to practice typing things into calculators so you get the right answer. A lot of times students will do everything correctly. Everything will be perfect, but they'll just mess up typing one thing into their calculator and it screws all of their work up. Yeah, what happened? You like typed in the velocity wrong or something like that? I would have screwed everything up. Yeah. All right. Yeah, great, Benini. You're really, you're really crushing these notes, bud. That's the key. You don't need to write it down. I agree. Some people do, though. Now, once you get it in once, it's in for good. So we could change these numbers if we wanted to. But what do we get um, after we add and subtract? 40, 48? 48.543 or something like that. Great. Guys, what did we do essentially? We found a position at eight by using a position at time zero and by adding a displacement, an area under a derivative, right? It looks a little different though. Why does it look different? Because we use two velocities. We have like a velocity in and a velocity out. Well, I'm gonna show you how I can make this answer, I can create this answer 48.543 using this exact same kind of format. One integral, one initial, we've done this before, it's just showing up and looking different, okay? So what we realize is this is really just like calculator questions from your test, question three and question four. Only instead of one velocity, you're given two. Instead of X, V, and A, you have to worry about, there's gonna be these rates and you're gonna be asked for populations or totals. What else were you asked on your test? Are we increasing? Are we decreasing? Do we have a max? Do we have a min? Where? What do we need to answer these questions? What did you have to provide and analyze for questions three and four on your test? Tell your neighbors. What do we need to figure out when P is increasing or decreasing? What do we need? A sign analysis of P prime. I don't know how confident you guys are about saying that because it didn't pop out too often from these tables. Guys, we're going to need P prime. 
We are thinking of P prime as being X prime. We're thinking of P prime as being V. It's the same stuff. It's just going to look different. But what is our expression for P prime? All right, let's go back. This is P. That was my population. It was my initial amount, and then I just like changed these numbers depending on what I had. I had an integral of R and an integral of D. Oh, yeah, cool. What is the derivative of this expression? What is the derivative of that expression? Go, no, tell your neighbors. What's the derivative of the expression? Try something. Don't check out. What's the derivative of P? What's P prime? What's the derivative of that? What do you think the derivative of that is? This is the equation of P. Our initial amount plus our total in minus the total out. Our total amount, here's P. What's P prime? Thirty P. I got the first part. No, that's the antiderivative of P, Ember. Wrong. Oh wait, never mind. <laughs> Ready? The derivative of thirty is zero. A derivative of an integral. An integral represents area, but we know humans could find areas by taking antiderivatives. You're thinking, what is the derivative of an antiderivative? Well, don't they just cancel themselves out? Yes. What is the derivative of this integral? Just cancel itself out. R minus D is P prime. Guys, keys to rate problems. You are going to have to analyze when things are increasing and decreasing. You will need the derivative. And the derivative will be your rate in minus your rate out. You will then do an analysis of P prime, positives and negatives, and it'll show when P is increasing, decreasing. I don't know if you noticed on like the homework videos and like when we were talking about your justifications for maxes and mins, I didn't use V. Or if I used V, I always put X prime down. It's so important to understand a sign of a derivative gives us if the original is increasing or decreasing. X prime just so happens to be Z. Okay, cool. What did you guys do on questions three and four to find maxes and mins? You took your velocity and you immediately graphed it. We will be doing the same thing here. We will be taking our velocity. We will be taking our derivative. We'll take P prime and we're gonna graph it. Graph it, do it. Now, you're probably gonna be a little bit like concerned, a little bit cautious. You're gonna be like, okay, 20 sine T squared. That's the negative first. That's not going to work. 20 sine t squared over 35 minus, you tell me I need to subtract this entire d? Yes. Heads up. Put parentheses around it because you're smart and you know you have to subtract the entire d from r. This one's especially annoying since it's so long but it is correct, negative 0.04x cubed plus 0.4x squared plus 0.96x. Close parentheses. Hey, might as well graph y equals zero. Window. The interval is from zero to eight in the problem. Zoom. Should look like this.
Got it? Guys, this is the graph of X prime that you're used to. This is the graph of F prime. This is P prime. If you don't get that graph, you touch something in wrong. I'm sorry. If you don't get this graph, pause. We'll fix it on the on the late end. Okay. Now, is water increasing or decreasing at t equals two? Answer that question with justification. Is our water level in our large water bottle increasing or decreasing at t equals two? Answer that question. Guys, what do we like to do? We like to find zeros of P prime. We like to find zeros of derivatives, 3.271. We know that P prime is negative than positive. That means P is decreasing than increasing. Oh, P prime of two is negative. If you are thinking, oh, I'm looking at two and it looks like the graph is going up, that means it's increasing? No, you're actually answering about an acceleration. You're answering how is the rate of change changing? You are talking about the rate of change of a rate of change. Make sure you understand a sign of a derivative. Tells you if your original thing is decreasing and increasing. This is the exact same thing as, are you going left or right at t equals two? Is the dude moving to the left or to the right? You're familiar with that question, right? Yeah. Position is decreasing when its derivative is negative, boom. Now, here's one thing that I didn't ask that I will be asking. I probably should have asked it in Unit 7. How much is it decreasing by? I never asked you, is the dude moving left or right? And then how quickly is he moving to the left or to the right? Okay, I'm not going to, I'm going to ask that now. How quickly is the amount decreasing? You need to make sure you have this. Since P prime is negative, P is decreasing. A lot of us are confusing ourselves, thinking negatives mean decreasing. It's like, yes, negatives of derivatives means original things are decreasing. Okay? Now, the extra part of this question by how much just has you find the value of P prime at 2. Everybody go to trace, press trace then press two. Your calculator plugs in two into R minus D. It gives us R of two minus D of two. R of two minus D of two is P prime of two. It is negative 0.919. This is the rate that water is decreasing. This is cubic feet per hour. It is a rate. Cool, Scott? R2, D2 is exactly right. Now, what always comes next? Maxes and mins. Justification. Well, boom. You know that has to be a min. If you're asked for a justification for a min, you can say, hey, P prime is negative from 0 to 3.271, or it's positive. It's 
positive then from 3.271 to 8. That ensures T equals 3.271 has to be the min. If you only have one candidate, as long as you explain why your candidate is your candidate, you're fine. Or you do the candidate test. P has got a min where P prime equals zero or an endpoint. Well, now we need to go through and list off our candidate. All right. P of zero, I already know, is 30. We now have P of 3.271. And we also have P of 8, which we found earlier. Now watch this, guy. Remember P of 8 we found by using two integrals. Couldn't I just find it by taking my initial amount and adding the area under P prime? One integral instead of two. What do we get? 48.543 or something like that? Watch me get 48.543 a different way. Ready? Math nine. Zero to eight of P prime is graphed in Y one. Add thirty. All right. This is the same as zero to eight of rate in minus zero to eight of rate out. It's just combined into one thing. Is that cool? All right, you guys find uh, the minimum amount of water in our tank. Now, what do we do? We store our zeros. As A in my calculator, I'm going to store this as A. I'll do 30 plus my integral from 0 to A. Same stuff we've done. It just looks different. Two velocities, not just one. But if we subtract the two, we're good. Now, this is a lot of kind of like copying down and you're working probably a little bit slower than me. So I'm going to give you an opportunity to do a homework problem. So, do you know what's going on? Let's see. Fish. Just telling you this right now. I'm adding this to the fish problem. There are a hundred fish in the lake at t equals zero. Please do part A and part C. Go.
we change the problem so that there is an initial amount. There are 100 fish in the lake at t equals zero. Total in, total in, total out. Total. Now, if you read question uh, part A carefully, it doesn't ask you how many fish are in the lake at t equals 5. It just asks you how many fish enter the lake. I will tell you the answer shortly. Hundred and fifty three point four five seven is the answer to part A. You see the same thing I do, huh? Get the get the amount. So, uh, how many fish are in the lake at your max? No, add that to a hundred. Uh, yes and no. The next lesson is is very similar, but a little bit different. Wait, hold on. 
Mine didn't look like that. Yo, Benini, do we have the four? Let me see how you touch your equation. There. That's what I know. No, I don't know yours as well. Oh, you didn't, you didn't subtract. Why didn't you subtract? The rate out. Fish are leaving the lake, dude. Is it point 0.1 or point 0.01? Oh, it's point 0.1. I messed up. There we go. Now we're right. Look like that. Good. Never mind. Cancel, 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 cancel. You don't have zero graph? Come on, Benini. Six point two zero three. Anybody see that number? One two zero three. Two hundred and thirty five point zero one four fish. Anybody get that number? And just for fun and practice, you can also find your other endpoint. Again, you don't have to find this value and then take that value and add your displacement from 6.203 to 8. You could just let your calculator go 0 to 8. Math 9, 0 to 8 of Y1 will give you the area under your derivative, so long as you know your derivative is typed in correctly. That's 80.919 added to zero, which gives us 180.919. Now, this is one way to get your answer to part C and get full credit. Is there another way to get the answer to part C for full credit without doing what I just did? Is there another way? Put your phone away. You dick did. Don't care. You're cushioned because you. Is there another way? Go on her. No. No, you need integrals of functions and numbers. Okay? The sign analysis doesn't count. But your sign analysis gives you your other way. Guys, you have this graph of P prime. I didn't graph it in this calculation, so I'm not going to show it. You have this graph of P prime. You have this value, 6.203, right? You know P prime is positive, then negative. P is increasing, then decreasing. You know this must be the max. Has to be the max. They don't ask you for how many fish in this question. They just ask you for the time. You literally did not have to check candidates. 
You did not have to write this statement, though this is a way. You could have said T equals 6.203 is the max because P prime is positive from 0 to 6.203, and then P prime was negative from 6.203 to 8. This is the exact same thing as this. However, the AP test one year decided we don't like this. This is not sufficient. We like students to turn this into notation, which sucks. Let's be honest. It's so stupid. It's like you know how to do a sign analysis. You know that that has to be the max just by looking at your sign analysis. But one year they said, we don't like this anymore. And they go back to, you need to reference signs by using like greater than zero, less than zero. You need to make sure you cover the interval, even though it's right there. And it's annoying, but guess what? This is easier than if you did all the work of finding all of the positions or all of the populations, okay? Cool. Now that we did the cool part, what's B? Get the answer to B. I'll tell you what it is. Uh, I'll tell you what it is, and then you tell me if you got the same thing. Six point zero five nine. Well, I got. Six point zero five nine is what I got. Just leave. Six point zero five nine? And now six point zero five nine. Get the answer to part B. How do you get the answer to part B? 6.059. 6.059. 6.059. because you guys know your new understanding of average. 1 over B minus A, integral from A to B of what you're trying to find the average of. And hip, hip, hooray, you have a calculator to calculate that. You get the total out, divide it by the interval. You get the average number of fish that have left over the interval. Now let's go to part D and let's have our mind blown. Is the rate of change of the number of fish increasing or decreasing at T equals five? Explain your reasoning. I'm gonna to have to show this on your calculator. On my calculator. All right, let's get your E minus L. 20 plus. Ready? This is going to blow your minds, guys. Everybody gets this wrong at least twice or three times. P prime of 5 is 17.843. P prime of 5 is 17.843. P prime of 5 is positive which means P is increasing at that rate. P prime is positive, P is increasing. Cool? That's not the answer. Well, it's good to know this, okay? 
is the rate of change increasing or decreasing? Guess what we need, Mr. P prime increasing or decreasing based on P double prime sine hip hip hooray. We're back to a second derivative sine analysis. Or you look at P prime. What is it doing? It's decreasing. Oh, the rate of change is P prime. Is the rate of change increasing or decreasing? Oh, it's going down. How can you determine? Find the derivative at five. P double prime, which is R prime minus D prime, is negative. P prime is decreasing. The rate that water is changing is decreasing. Isn't that tricky? The way that they read it, you think it's like, is the amount of fish increasing or decreasing? And you look at a sign of a derivative. In reality, we're looking at whether our derivative is increasing or decreasing. We need our second derivative. P prime is decreasing, and uh, P double prime of 5 was negative 10.722. Now, what would that be? It's units. What would be the units of P double prime of five? Think about acceleration being a second derivative. What's an acceleration? Miles per hour squared, meters per second squared, fish per hour squared. Fish per hour, fish per hour per hour. Okay, this is in fish per hour per hour. Okay? All right, cool. Now, things get more complicated. We'll go back and forth between the notes and a problem. Janet's driveway. Find it. Janet's driveway. All right, now, what do we notice about Janet's driveway? Janet is sleeping in. Not really. Snow is falling. The rate that snow is falling is changing. That makes sense. Snow doesn't fall consistently. Janet sleeps. Janet wakes up, has a cup of coffee, and then starts hitting the driveway hard. She's removing snow at 125 cubic feet per hour over one hour. Now, you know rate times time is a total. Like 70 miles per hour over two hours is 140. 125 feet per hour, one hour, you get 125. You don't have to know that. Don't worry about it. Then she slows down. Obviously, she's getting older, and she can't hit it as hard as she used to. Okay? 108 uh, cubic feet per hour for two hours. Now, here's what we have to consider for part D. How many cubic feet are in the driveway at 9 a.m.? We have no snow at the beginning of the day. This is the rate that we are adding snow. 9 a.m. Cool. 6 a.m. T equals 6, 9 a.m. 9. We have snow being added over the course of the nine hours by F. Our total in would be that. Now, my total out 
having three different rates out sometimes confuses students. But don't let it. A total out could be a rate for one time. Well, that's obviously zero. I didn't remove any snow. Plus a different rate for a different time. Can everybody type in this integral 6 to 7 of 125? Tell me what you get. Six to seven, 125. Do you get 125? This should make sense. 125 feet per hour over one hour. This is 125. But then I also have from seven to nine, 108. Oh, 108 cubic feet per hour over two hours. Plug this into your calculator, I guarantee you get 216. It should make sense. It's a constant rate, constant rate times time. Rates are not changing. You should be okay. What do we notice? Sometimes we're going to have to use different intervals at different times. Okay? You get that answer. Great. Part B, this is part D that we did. Let's go back to part B. The rate of change of the volume of the snow. P is the volume of the snow. We want to find P prime of 8. Find P prime of 8 for me. All right, here's where everybody messes up. Everybody's like, okay, if I take the derivative of this, I should get F minus 0 plus 125 plus 108. But no, you're not thinking about it right. If you plugged in 8 into G, you just get 108. We are only using this 108 for this time frame. So, in your notes, you can do this in the keys of the rate problems or just in the next problem. If you have multiple rates out, your derivative will be rate in minus rate out but only for one specific interval in which you're using the rate out or you're using the rate in. I would look at F minus 250 from 0 to 3. This is the problem you have in your notes. I'd look at F minus 2000 from 3 to 7. If your rates change, well, don't use both 250 and 2000 for this problem. I would just use 108 at this moment in time. I would do F minus 108. If I asked you for the rate of change at six and a half, well, I would do F of six and a half minus 125. If I asked you for max, maxes and mins, you'd have to split up your derivative sign analysis to be F minus zero from zero to six. F minus 125 from six to seven. F minus 108 from seven to nine. Sometimes you'll have to have three graphs that you look at with different intervals working your way across. Okay? And now we go to 
My favorite problem, something without a calculator. It's in your notes. Does that mean like F of Yeah, All right, here we go. There were 10 down branches in a park at the beginning of the ice apocalypse. Branches started to fall down in the morning at a rate of nine minus two feet branches per hour. Over the course of four hours, workers started removing branches at the same time they started falling down at a rate of T equals T branches per hour. How many branches fell over the course of four hours? What is the total amount of branches in the park after four hours? It seems so, seems so appropriate, this question, for this period of time. This is the rate at which they fell down, which means it's the rate that they're being added. This is the rate that they're being removed. Integral from 0 to 4 of 9 minus 2t would be the total added or the total in. You don't have a calculator. What do you do? You don't have a calculator. Thank you, Ember, for that <laughs> emphasis. You have to find the antiderivative of the rate that they're falling down, you need to find some expression for the total amount that has fallen down. You need to take the antiderivative, 9t minus t squared. Yeah, there's going to be a plus c, but you'll find the total amount that has fallen down after four hours. You actually know what c is, it's 10. Subtract 0, 36 minus 16, 20 branches fell down. So, guys, all we just kind of experienced is a different type of question that looks different, but it's really the same as what we've done before. Here's this, by the way. Thanks. Thank you. Have a good week, guys. Later, guys.